Right. So thank you so much and good morning, everybody. Um, so my name is Kashif, as uh, Chris has mentioned. I'm joined by uh, Dr. Abu Bakr, my colleague from Imperial College London. Um, I will be presenting the uh, experimental methodology for determination of degree of restraint in uh, degree of edge restraint in reinforced concrete walls. And um, on the screen, you can see the uh, contents of the presentation. I will briefly explain the phenomena of restraint induced cracking and then introduce the ongoing EPSRC funded uh, research on the topic. This will be followed by the uh, details of experimental methodology and calculation of the degree of restraint. So concrete, we know that it undergoes volume change and uh, that volume ch change is significant during the early age, but continues throughout the life of uh, structures. This volume change is composed of thermal and shrinkage strains uh, occurring in the concrete. And these are commonly uh, referred to as, as imposed strain. When the imposed strains are restrained from occurring due to internally or externally applied restraint, tensile stresses develop in the member. And when these stresses exceed the tensile strength or capacity of concrete, we get cracking, which is a major concern in many concrete structures. The imposed restraint can be externally applied by the adjoining members or internally by the thermal gradients and steel reinforcement present in the concrete. It is expressed as degree of restraint and is uh, its value ranges between zero for no restraint and one for perfect restraint. <clears throat> Presently, a very detailed and comprehensive uh, ex uh, research funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council of UK is being undertaken by a team of researchers at University of Leeds and Imperial College London. The research involves extensive experimental investigation and is aimed at the <clears throat> it is aimed at bringing up the <clears throat> developing a design oriented analytical procedure for crack control reinforcement in walls subjected to various forms of restraint. It involves a total of 28 uh, tasks to be carried out on different types of uh, walls. And at the moment, we are focusing on the edge restraint walls and we I'll be presenting the results from two of those tasks carried out in, in, in the institutions. So in the edge restraint test, we are uh, at the moment focusing on the uh, steel reinforcement as a major parameter, the horizontal and vertical steel reinforcement both. So we are studying the influence of uh, variation in the steel reinforcement on the members. The vertical steel reinforcement is being varied from 0.5 to 2% steel reinforcement ratio. And the horizontal steel reinforcement is varied from zero to 1%. These percentages are achieved by varying the bar sizes and spacing in the concrete members. Bar sizes of up to 20 millimeters uh, are being used in the, in, in the tests. So uh, coming over to the experimental methodology, in, in each test, the reinforced concrete slab is first constructed and is cured for a minimum period of 28 days to allow its uh, properties, mechanical properties to be developed significantly. The ends of the slab are held down, tied down to the strong floor of the uh, laboratory through holding down bolts, as you can see here, before the wall is cast. So when the wall is constructed, on the uh, existing slab, it 
it like it tries to undergo the volume change as shown by the dotted red line here which would be the uh, the kind of volume change when the if there is no restraint to the member however what happens is that the uh, this uh, deformation goes something like this so the the edge of the wall is being restrained by the slab and that results in the uh, tensile stresses, which can lead to development of cracks. In terms of the geometry of the test, so we uh, have a slab of 5.4 meters length, one meter width and 0 0.4 meters thickness. The slab is reinforced with 12 millimeter uh, reinforcement bars at both, both top and bottom faces. And the wall is four meters long, one meter high, and the thickness is uh, 250 millimeters. And the reinforcement in the walls is varied both in horizontal and vertical direction, as I mentioned earlier. The instrumentation used for uh, getting gathering the data from the tests is shown here. So we use thermocouples for recording the temperatures, uh, the ERS gauges and vibrating wire strain gauges for monitoring the steel and concrete strain respectively. We also use the uh, LVDTs to externally monitor the deformations occurring in the wall. And the load cells are uh, applied with the holding down bolts to monitor the load which is being uh, applied to the bolts and also to monitor any upward curling of the base slab if it occurs so we can uh, monitor that each slab requires 2.2 cubic meters of concrete and each wall requires at least one cubic meter of concrete so this is quite a quantum of concrete for uh, research laboratory so we uh, procure concrete from uh, we procure the ready mix concrete from hansen concrete um, and that is used for casting each of the members different compositions were tried uh, for uh, th these tests and finally uh, you can see the three compositions which we tried and finally we are now using mix 3 for uh, for the tests now and more uh, <clears throat> larger, uh, greater cement content and higher water cement uh, ratio is used to maximize the shrinkage and the thermal effects in the walls. These are some of the photographs uh, of the tests indicating the sequence of uh, activities. <clears throat> so as you can, sorry. <clears throat> as you can see on the top left, we first construct the uh, base slab and then we uh, cure it for uh, a 28 days period then the form work for the wall comes in the form work is insulated and then we install the uh, we cast the the wall and on removal of form work then immediately we start to monitor the strains the wall form work is removed 20 to 24 hours after the, the wall has been cast. Temperature development in the wall and slab is monitored using the thermocouples. So this graph here, uh, the two graphs indicates the, the thermal profiles observed in, in the two tests. So we uh, get the first thing to notice is that there is an increase in the temperature in the slab as well because of the uh, heat of hydration in the wall and that is transferred to the to the slab so the the these ones here you can see they they are the increase in the slab temperature because of the wall hydration and also the uh, temperature development in the wall close to the bottom is low compared to the the one the, the points higher up in the wall that can be seen from the two graphs towards the bottom. So the left one is for the 
temperatures in the ends of the wall and the, the right one is for uh, the temperatures along the center line for both tests. And you can notice that there is a very low temperature compared to the higher points in the wall. In order to determine the free, the magnitude of free strain, which, which the wall would exhibit, uh, we need to know the uh, thermal and shrinkage strains both. Unrestrained or free shrinkage is monitored using concrete prisms cast from each batch of concrete and placed in the same environmental conditions as those of the wall and slab. The shrinkage profiles obtained from these prisms are compared to the models uh, available for shrinkage uh, determination in various codes. And the model which closely matches with the obtained, experimentally obtained shrinkage profile is then employed for determining the free shrinkage, for calculating the free shrinkage for the larger members. In order to measure the concrete surface strains, demountable mechanical gauges are uh, fixed on the wall. A coarser mesh, a coarser grid is used towards the end and the finer mesh, uh, finer grade is used in the central part. The wall for the purpose of this uh, measurement is divided into three portions as you can see on the slide. So the middle part is with finer grid and the outer parts are with coarser grid. The purpose of dividing the, the wall into these two parts is one to economize on the time required for uh, strain measurements. And also we know that the action of restraint is more pronounced in the middle, uh, in the central portions of the walls compared to the ends. And we then um, calculate the degree of restraint in both portions to, to compare them. So here we can see the uh, strains measured on the wall surface and their development with time. So these are the strains along the length. On the left side is the strain profiles along the length at the bottom of the wall or the lowest point in the wall. And the right one is for the strains uh, at the top level of the wall. The strains are expressed in micro strains. And you can clearly see there is a, a lot of difference between the strain uh, occurring in the bottom and in the top of the wall. That indicates the influence of restraining member on the wall. Here we can see the uh, measured surface strains along height of the wall. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, so the, uh, lower strains at the bottom and much higher at the top. And these strains continue to increase with time for, for each case. Uh, this is the representation of strains for first test. Left one is for the middle part of the wall and the right one is for the ends. This is the uh, similar behavior which was observed in the case of uh, uh, second test. So increase in strain with time and along the height of the walls. And lesser strain occurs in the middle parts compared to the ends. Now, when we have the uh, unrestrained uh, shrinkage and the thermal strain, we can then calculate the free strain uh, in the wall uh, by adding the shrinkage and thermal strain. The thermal strain is calculated from the observed temperatures by multiplying it with the coefficient of thermal expansion of concrete. The measured surface strain, which we get from the wall is uh, the represented by epsilon measured and both of, by subtracting that from the free strain, we calculate the restrained strain in the wall. And the degree of restraint, which is expressed as a ratio between the restraint strain and free strain is then calculated uh, as shown here for 
different parts along the height and length of the wall. Here we can see the restraint profiles obtained using this methodology for uh, at different parts of the wall. So the left two uh, graphs are for the first test at the middle and end regions. And you can see that the restraint is maximum at the bottom and it decreases gradually along the height of the wall, reaching a value of zero uh, at somewhere in the, uh, along the height. In the case of test two also, the uh, observed restraint profiles are much uh, closer together, uh, not much re reduction in the restraints was found. Uh, so it, here also the behavior is same, more restraint in the middle and less in the ends. In the test one, maximum uh, degree of restraint observed was 0.59 or 59%. And in the case of test two, this was 68%. So to summarize, the methodology adopted for experimentally investigating the edge restraint in reinforced concrete walls has been presented. Restraint is imposed by pre-existing base slab on to the volume change occurring in the fresh reconstructed wall. Free strain is dependent on the composition of concrete, the environmental conditions and member sizes, and can be calculated as a sum of thermal and shrinkage strain. The degree of restraint is maximum at the joint between the two members and gradually reduces along the height. Uh, finally, the acknowledgements, uh, I would like to acknowledge the support from EPSRC and my, our research team at both uh, Imperial College and University of Leeds.